Lokaya Nupasana Satipatthana Dhatu Manasikara Reflection on the material elements. And Buddha continued, Bhikkhus. And again, a Bhikkhu, a, a monk reflects upon this very body just as it is placed or disposed with regard to its primary elements. There are in this body the other elements, <coughs> the water element, the fire elements, and the air elements. As a skillful butcher or his apprentice, having slaughtered a cow and divided it into portions, was sitting at the junction of the four highways. Just so, Bhikkhus, a monk reflects upon this very body, just as it is placed or disposed, with regard to its primary elements. <coughs> There are in this body the earth elements, the water element, the fire elements, and the air elements. So this section in this sutta talks about these material elements and how you should reflect on your body, whatever pulses, they might be assuming. Whether you are sitting or walking, <coughs> standing or lying down, you will reflect on your body with respect to these four primary elements. Here yeah, among the 32 parts of the body, from head hair to brain, altogether 20 are said to be earth elements because hardness or softness is predominant there. And from bile to urine, altogether 12 are said to be water elements because trickling or Fluidity is predominant there. Fire elements is divided into four and the air elements into six. <clears throat> so they are said to be altogether 42 kinds of body parts. Traditionally, there are four material elements the earth elements, the water elements, the fire elements, the air elements. <coughs> Meditation on these four elements is mentioned only briefly in this Mahasiddhipatana Sutta. It is meant for meditators with quick understanding. That is for people of quick intelligence, as we are in the Rahulawara Sutta and Dadu Vipanga Sutta, the meditation, this meditation is explained in more detail. These suttas are for people who are not so quick in understanding. Whenever the Buddha delivered a sermon, he looked at the likes and dislikes of his listener and also whether or not their minds are mature. Only after investigating this, Buddha delivered his discourse according to the situation. So in some soda, Buddha went into more details. 
In this Vasatipatthana Sutta, the topic is treated very briefly. The purpose of this kind of meditation is to remove the concept of a being, to remove the concept of a being or seeing yourself and others as being. To remove this concept, you need to practice meditation of mental, mentally dividing the body into four parts and seeing them separately, each, each as one of the four elements that are called Mahabuddha, great elements. <clears throat> So in the RCV Sopama Sutta, the discourse on simile of poisonous snake, Buddha delivered four snakes. Buddha delivered that four poisonous snakes are compared to four elements. <clears throat> Chattaro Asi Visa Oga Deja Gora Visa Dit Ko Big Wiz Tone is Dan Mahabudanam Adi Vajana Batui Daduya Abo Daduya Dejo Daduya Wayo Daduya The four poisonous snakes of fierce heat and deadly Venom is a destination for the four great elements, the earth elements, the water elements, the fire elements, and the air elements, <coughs> Buddha said. Four poisonous snakes are no other than four great elements that constitute each and every one of us, earth elements, water elements, fire elements, and air elements. <coughs> Meditators are very familiar to these four elements because you are very interested in the Dhamma. The four elements are very familiar to all meditators. Initially, the owner of the snakes or the viper handler, handler take pride and delight in these snakes that creep up and rest on his body. He thinks that the poisonous snakes coiling around his arm and neck are very beautiful, like bracelets and necklaces. It is just a simile with the simile refers to is four great elements. Four great elements permeate the entire body of everyone. There is no part of our body, not even a minute physical cluster, one clapper which is not constituted of the four great elements. Today, scientists have discovered 
minute subatomic physical phenomena like atoms, etc. However minute they may be, they are each constituted of four great elements. According to the Abhidharma teaching, a smallest physical kalapa is constituted of eight physical phenomena at least. We can reduce the particle to smallest subatoms or particles. In every particle of material, however small it may be, there are these eight particles. In the Bhidama, it is called Avuni Boga Rupa. Subatomic particles are Vinna, Kala or visible object, Kanda, smell, rasa, taste, oja, nutritive essence, atui dadu, earth element, abo dadu, water element, dijo dadu, fire elements, and wayo dadu, air elements. These subatomic particles or eight physical phenomena are is separable, they cannot be separated. There is Buddha teaching. The resemblance between four elements and four poisonous snakes is defined by deadly venom. Basically, snakes are classified into four kinds in terms of their deadly venom. The first kind of snake is stick mouth katamuka snake. Bitten by dead snake, the person becomes stiff like a stick and he dies suddenly. And the second kind of snake is rotten mouth, Utimukha snake. Bitten by the snake, the person dies of a rotten body with discharge of mucus, pus, and blood. And the third snake is fire mouth, Agimuka snake. Bitten by the snake, that person dies of extreme body heat, like burned by fire. And the fourth snake is Satamuka snake, that is knife mouth snake. Bitten by the snake, he dies of broken sinews like chopped off by a, by, a, by a knife. Katamuka snake. Stigma snake resemble the earth elements. When earth element goes round in your body, your body becomes so hard, so stiff, that you cannot even bend down or stretch out, and you die in the end. The physician cannot do anything. And there are some people who die of stiff body due to certain kinds of disease, kidney and liver have problem, and finally the person die. 
for such that the faulty earth elements is to be blamed. Another snake, very poisonous, Putimuka snake. <clears throat> the rotten mouth snake is compared to the water element. When water element snake bites, his body becomes rotten with discharge of mucus, pus, and blood. In the same way, some people die of diseases with discharge of rotten mucus, like dysentery. For such death, the faulty water element about Dadu is to be blamed. The person body is swollen and bloated, you may see in the hospital. Another snake, another element is Egimuka snake. Fire mouth snake resemble the fire elements. This snake has fire like venom bitten by the snake. The person die of extreme heat like burned by fire. It may be somewhat like extreme fever due to typhoid and some kinds of cancer patient. Their body is burning, very dangerous cancer diseases, that is fire elements by them. Another Snake is Satamuka snake. The knife mouth snake is a simile for the air elements, like chop off with a knife or sharp blade when the air elements goes wrong. He feel so painful as if his joints and sinews were broken down with a sharp knife. People say they feel cutting with air blade, referring to stroke. Blood flow is not very smooth. A lot of block in the artery and they have stroke, many stroke, and finally they die. That is bitten by Satamuka air elements. So in this RC we saw Bamasoda, the simile of poisonous snake, Buddha reminded not to attach to these four poisonous snakes. Not to attach to the four elements. Elements are arising and passing away continuously. To escape from all your suffering, Buddha instructed Meditator to dispassionate the four elements by practicing Vipassana meditation diligently. Now you are doing. You are trying to escape from this poisonous snake. And you see the faulty nature of these snakes. You understand. You take care of these four snakes. You take care of your four elements very attentively. You do exercise. You feed breakfast and lunch, and you take shower, and you clean your you clean your four snakes very kindly. But the snakes never respond to you in a good way. 
So Buddha instructed all meditators to run away from these four poisonous snakes. Vipassana meditation is the only way to escape from these poisonous snakes. Buddha instructed not to attach to the four elements. He advised to see the true nature of these four elements, four poisonous snakes. In one noting, you escape from these snakes. One time, one noting is to escape from these poisonous snakes. Then noting is getting far and far away from these poisonous snakes. Two months intensive retreats. Millions of notings are there, and these noting is the way to escape from these poisonous snakes. Finally, meditators totally escape from these snakes. That means meditators become and also when you practice vipassana meditation to see the true nature of these four elements, it is important to see these four elements by way of their characteristics, function, and manifestation. What are the characteristic function and manifestation? The earth elements does not mean the earth as we know it. It means something that is inherent in the earth and of course in other things as well. The state of being of the earth or the quality of stiffness, hardness or softness that are the characteristics of the earth elements. So these four elements are found everywhere in sentient beings as well as in plants and in animate objects. When you practice meditation, sitting, rise, noting, rising, falling, standing, stretching, bending, you see these other elements many times. The characteristics of stiffness or hardness or softness are what are called the earth elements. And when you touch the water, you feel some kinds of softness, and this softness is the earth elements. When you feel the wind blowing in your face, you feel some kinds of hotness or softness, and that is the earth elements. You find this earth elements everywhere. Its function is to act as a foundation, something on which something else is resting or exists. To Vipassana practitioner who meditate on the earth elements, it manifests itself as receiving or accepting. So you must understand the earth elements according to its characteristics of function or manifestation. Again, the characteristics of earth elements are hardness or softness. Its function is to act as a foundation and its manifestation are receiving or accepting something.
during the practice of rising, noting, rising, falling, standing, stretching, bending, you encounter water elements. Water element here means not the water as we know it, but its characteristics, which are trickling or cohesion or fluidity. Trickling or cohesion of fluidity indicates the presence of water elements. It is present in everything. There is cohesion in the earth or wood or bricks and so on. This cohesion which holds things together is one characteristic of the water elements. The functions of water elements is to intensify. It intensify everything which comes into contact with it. It manifests to you as holding things together. When you add water to floor, for example, you get dough. The water holds the particles together. This holding together is a manifestation of the water element. When you meditate, this manifestation will sometimes come to you You will see on, you will know it, sometimes by its characteristics, sometimes by its function, and sometimes by its manifestation. Your eyes are getting sharper and sharper to see, to capture these characteristics, etc. During the practice of sitting, stretching, bending, you encounter fire elements. Fire element is not the fires as we know it, but the state of being of the fire, the quality of fire, that is heat. Heat of fire mature and age things. By heat, we mean cold also. Heat, cold, or temperature is the characteristic of the fire elements. When you feel hot or cold, you feel the fire elements. And when your body becomes mature or when it's age, it is the work of the fire elements. Its functions are to mature things, to cool or to heat things. Its manifestation is continued supply of softness. For example, when you cook something, what is cooked with soften? In the same way, the heat in your body soften it, so so that your body age. These are the characteristic function and manifestation of the fire elements. And there are four kinds of fire elements. One is that by which somebody or something is warmed. You feel warmth in your body and when you are sick, you have a temperature. And the second kind of fire elements is that by which things age. And the third is that by which somebody or something is burned up, that is excessive heat. When you have high fever, you experience excessive body heat. 
And the fourth is the digestive heat, Pasaka Dejo. By that digestive heat, everything eaten, drunk, chewed, or savored is digested. When there is good digestive heat or good stomach fire, as we call it, you can digest whatever you eat because you have done good karma in the past. Whatever you eat, you can digest. When you don't have good digestive heat, you will have stomach trouble. So these are the four kinds of fire elements. And the last element is the air elements. Now you are sitting, air elements is very clear. You know, sitting, touching, sitting, touching. And you capture the air elements when you pay attention to your sitting postures continuously. The characteristics of the air elements are extension, expanding, or distending. When you blow air into the into a balloon, it becomes extended. The fact that you can sit or you can stand upright and do not fall down is also the work of the air elements, which supports you from all sides. So its function is to cause motion. When you move, your motions are caused by the air elements. So walking meditation is very clear. You can capture the air elements. And the manifestation of air elements is converging. And there are six kinds of air elements. Number one, upgoing, which causes vomiting or hiccup, etc. And number two is downgoing, which carries feces and urine out of our body because of the downgoing air elements. Number three is wind in the belly outside the bowels. Number four is wind in the bowels. Number eight is breath, that is in breath and out breath. It is the air elements that causes movements in our body. When we walk or stretch or bend, the air elements is walking caused by your intention, caused by your consciousness. Meditators contemplate these four elements during your practice. Let us see how you can observe these four elements when you are practicing walking meditation. Every walking step you note, raising, pushing forward, dropping, pressing, lifting, pushing forward, dropping, stepping. So when you walk fast, you lift your foot, the upward movement manifests the lightness in your foot. The lightness is caused by the air, uh, caused by the fire elements. And when you raise your foot, 
there is movement the movement is caused by the air elements and when you push your foot forward this movement is also caused by the air elements and when you put your foot down it becomes heavier which indicates the presence of the water element and when you touch the ground or floor with your foot you feel hardness or softness both in the floor and in the foot so that hardness or softness is the characteristics of the earth elements. So in making one step, you really mindful and you can distinguish these four elements. You are discovering these four elements and you are getting away from four poisonous snakes. You are free, you are purified in lifting the food, the fire and the air elements are evident. In pushing food, in pushing the food forward, you recognize the air elements. In putting the food down, the water elements. And in touching the ground or the floor, the earth elements. So you observe the four elements that are present in a single step. Although at first you may not notice the presence of all four elements. But when you really pay attention, you can capture all these four elements. When you see the elements clearly, you lose the concept of a being. Now you see that there are just these four elements. Four elements are going, four elements are sitting, four elements are standing, four elements are eating, four elements are chewing, and so on. When you see only these four elements going and so on, you cannot see a person. You, you lose the concept of a being. The observation of the four elements is explained in the Sota with a simile. The commentary explained it in this way. When a butcher is feeding a cow, or when a butcher is nourishing the cow, and then takes it to the slaughtering place, tie it to a post and case the cow. The butcher still has the notion that it is a being, it is a cow. If someone would ask the butcher, what are you doing? The butcher say, I am feeding a cow or I am killing the cow. Even after killing the cow, before he cuts it up into pieces, he still maintains the notion that it is a cow. But when after cutting the slaughter cow into pieces, he takes and puts the pieces on the table at the crossroad. From that point on, he loses the notion of a cow. If someone would ask him, what are you selling? He would not say, I'm selling a car. 
he would not say. So after cutting the car into pieces, he lose the concept of a car in the same way. When you cut yourself into four elements, not the whole day you are cutting your body, rising, one cut, falling, one cut, another rising, one cut, another falling, one cut, walking, raising, dropping, raising, one cut, dropping, one cut. The whole day, the whole month, the whole two months, continuously you are cutting yourself into four elements. Whatever you have, whatever is in your body, it's just four elements. Then you will lose the concept of a being. You will lose the concept of a person. This meditation was taught by the Buddha to eliminate the concept of there is a being. The simile given above should not lead to the conclusion that meditators must conceptualize the elements. The elements taught in Buddhism are in fact not concept, but are parts of what is called ultimate reality which consists of Jaita, Consciousness, Jaitasika, Mental Factors, Rupa, Meta, and Nibbana. They are considered to be the real things in contrast to things in conventional reality. Meditators will gain many benefits from practicing this kind of meditation. We saw the mega in the path of purification. Venerable Bodhikosa said, these meditators <coughs> who is devoted to the defining of the four elements immerse himself in whiteness and eliminates the perception of living beings. Since he does not entertain false notion about wild bees, spirit, ogres, etc., because he has abolished the perception of living beings, he conquers fear and dread, and he conquers delight and aversion, boredom. He is not accelerated or depressed by agreeable or disagreeable things. And as one of the one of great understanding, he either ends in the deathless realms or he is bound he is born to he is born for happy destiny so when people practice vipassana meditation this will not lead to the attainment of jhana like in Kamatana meditation, it leads to the attainment of proximate concentration or SS concentration. When you practice meditation according to the Vipassana teaching, you try to see the four elements 
in every movement, that is in everything. You will see these four elements as well as your mind appearing and disappearing. When you recognize the rising and fading away of phenomena, you are said to have achieved the basic vipassana knowledge. From then on, you will reach higher levels until you reach the end of vipassana and attain realization. There is the rising and fading away of the elements and of the mind that dwells on the elements. When you have reached this stage of seeing the rising and fading away of phenomena, you can be sure to achieve higher stages of vipassana knowledge until you reach the realization stage. So Buddha said, thus he dwells contemplating the body in the body, internally or externally or both internally and externally. When you contemplate the elements in other people, you are said to be contemplating externally. When you contemplate your own and other people's elements back and forth, you are said to be contemplating both internally and externally. When you see that there are only these four elements and no person or being, you do not find anything to cling to. So, he does not cling to anything in the walls of the five aggregates of clinging. When there is no clinging, no gamma can form, no upadana and no gamma, no gamma bhava. When there are no gamma formation, there will be no becoming and no rebirth, and you will have reached the end of the rounds of suffering, you will have reached the end of the rounds of rebirth. So we have to stop our discourse for today. We we'll continue next time by practicing vipassana meditation, by contemplating the four elements, by noting rising, falling, stretching, bending, sitting, seeing, hearing continuously and meticulously, May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize their real peace in the very near future. So.